sanction would be lifted within two months of the implementation of the JCPOI and the next week both sides would enter its 90 days of the implementation. Hi everybody, welcome back. This week uh, Kanga Products sent me another kit which they are launching at the GQRP Build-A-Thon um, in October. This kit itself uh, is a regenerative receiver designed by George Dobbs, G3RJV, and uh, the PCB itself was designed by Paul Darlington, uh, M0XPD, who a lot of you will know from some of my other videos, who's a great source of inspiration. The kit which I built on this video, um, it's, uh, it's a fairly old design, um, it's a regenerative receiver, but it's nicely laid out and perfect for educating anybody who is new to electronics, new to radio, um, or in fact just a nice bit of fun to uh, build a, an old fashioned receiver in a, a modern era. So join me on this video, um, it's fairly quick, it's sped up, um, the build only took me two hours, but uh, you don't want to sit here for two hours watching me solder components and swear in between. Let me know what you think and uh, yeah, let's make a start. So looking at the board here, we've got the front panel of the main PCB nicely laid out and today we're going to be building the kit using a map configuration so every component's been given a grid reference and the first task we need to perform is to fit all the knobs on the front panel. Now it's just a case of fitting the Vericon capacitor. Two bolts hold this on in place and check that everything is okay. The panel has been held together here we're using modesty blocks that uh, your kitchen cabinets are usually held together with. So I'm fitting these on now to make it easier to fit at a later stage and also it gives me an idea of spacing as well and as you can see there's no problem soldering any of the other components onto the board. The very first thing we need to solder on here is the Merlitz connectors and as you can see we've got three pins and a registration block. The way we need to orient these on the board is the pins always face out and to help me solder this in place I'm going to be using some tape and I'm just going to solder one pin onto this three pin Molex. Check that it's aligned okay and this one just needs a slight tweak and solder the other two pins and we're happy. Good. Now with the power of editing I've now finished all of the Molex connectors and this is how it looks. So you can see here all the pins facing outwards and that's nice and tidy. Now going back we need to obviously connect these to the panel on the front. So what I'm going to do is connect the cables to the circuit board and measure up each of the, uh, the cables to the corresponding pots. Make sure that they're the same length that we need and trim each wire. I'm going to leave it plugged in so that we know which plug is which. Doing exactly the same thing on the regen, we're going to just measure up here on the front. Making sure we don't cut it too short. And I'm just going to turn the ends here. Now you notice I've put three pieces of heat shrink onto this uh, cable. And I've also bent up the pins on the potentiometer as well just to make it easier to solder. The wiring order is quite critical here. It's uh, red, blue and green. So once we've got them in place, put the heat shrink over the terminals, get the hot air gun out and heat in place. This just gives us a little bit more mechanical adhesion and uh, makes for a nicer, nicer joint as well. And then finally just twisting the cable and that gives us a perfect connection to the main PCB. So I've done all of the uh, variable pots just now doing the variable capacitor. We're only using two connections here and my trick here is to bend the terminal leg up and then push it down onto the board and you can see then that the actual component leg lies flat. Now applying quite a bit of heat with my solder gun here and just to make sure that nothing flicks out of the way I'm just going to hold it in place using a pair of tweezers. Sadly you can't see that because of the plug in the way uh, but that's now connected itself to the front panel I've turned to the other component leg and now we're just connecting the wire. And again I'll twist in place. Now it's time to actually install some components. So we're going to start with the power rails. 
and this resistor here is a current limiting resistor for the IC. And anybody who's watched any of my videos before, you'll notice that we just put the component in place, bend the legs and trim. And the instructions ask for the center pin to be bent backwards on all of our transistors and regulators. So what I do, and this is my tip, is I bend the center pin back at about a 45 degree angle, like so, and then kink the leg over so it's facing down. And then you'll find that this fits in the board perfectly and also gives you a nice little height for the component to stay off the board so you can make sure it's not shorting out with uh, with any boards that have earthing straps across the top. So again just bending the pins over and soldering in place. Now it's just a case of fitting the capacitors and here we go we put the electrolytic capacitor in place and you notice the white stripe and you notice the silk screen's got a plus sign we just need to make sure that the white stripe which is the negative doesn't go anywhere near the, uh, the positive so it's pretty straightforward and uh, we just solder in place And this is one of those component legs that just didn't want to solder. Um, I did check it afterwards and it was absolutely fine. So the last capacitor here just going in place and this is the final decoupling capacitor that we're just going to put on up by the antenna socket. And we're going to use this one in a moment to do a test, a voltage check. But whilst I'm here I'm also going to install some other components and I'm going to install the coil and here's a handy tip if you're installing components which have fairly large pads and you need to get a lot of heat into to get them to adhere to the board use a flux pen which is what I'm using here and what this does is this just helps the solder flow just that little bit more especially on large areas like this The only downside to this is that you will need to clean the board afterwards as well because it does it does spit a bit. But you can see that the pads are fairly large and I need to get quite a bit of heat because these are grounded. But you can see that the solder is flowing quite quickly for me. The iron is about 380 degrees in this video here, which is plenty hot enough really. And yes, I've used the tape here to hold the component in place whilst I was soldering it in. And it all looks good, nice and flush. And we're just going to do exactly the same thing for the aerial socket. It just makes sense to put this in now because it's out of the way. The trick with the flux pen also helps here if we have square holes with round pegs or flat pins with round holes like what we have here. It just helps um, with the solder flow across the component and the board. Good, now that that's in place we can now do some voltage checks. So there's two tests I need to perform here. Using a 9 volt battery I need to prove that the IC is working okay, the, the voltage regulator is working fine and that our current limiting resistor is doing its job. So I've plugged it in and thankfully nothing's burst into flames or gone up in smoke. So we're just going to check across that decoupling capacitor and there we go, we've got 8 volts and we've got 9 volts on the IC. Perfect, that just proves that the current limiting resistor and the voltage regulator are both working perfectly fine. So with that in mind, we can now crack on and start the audio circuit. And the audio circuit is fairly simple. It's an LM386. 
We've got a resistor, some ceramic capacitors and electrolytics. So I start off with the resistors and I'm going to move on to the IC socket here. And the IC socket, obviously we check for the orientation. Holding in tape and I'm soldering one component pin. Checking for alignment, making sure I'm happy. And then we'd go for one on the other side. Again, making sure it's happy. And this one just needed a slight squeeze. Once it's all in place, we'll go across the rest of the pins. Job done. So it's just a case now of fitting the rest of the uh, components in place here. And although I'm working at high speed here, and the, uh, the footage has been sped up, um, the actual build, including filming time and uh, generally faffing around, the, the build for this radio was about two hours. board starts to look quite tidy once you're starting uh, to get components on the uh, on the board and the headphone socket is the last thing on and uh, we're going to do another check now we're going to do an audio check so I'm going to plug in a speaker to the kit apply some volts and with a metallic object I'm going to touch the center pin of the volume control And that's perfect. I just needed to prove that the, uh, the audio chip is working fine. And the oscillator stage now, it's some resistors, capacitors, a switch, a diode. And it's exactly the same routine. Checking and double checking that we're putting the right components in at the right place. Uh, again, using the map that uh, we, we showed at the start. Bend the pins over. Off we go. This kit is absolutely perfect for anybody wanting to build a traditional radio. You know, this, this design is, is not a new design, it's quite an old design. It's absolutely perfect for somebody who just wants to build an old fashioned radio for shortwave listening. It does cover the 40 meter band as well, and with some poking around and some tweaking, you can probably get it to go on other bands as well. And as you've seen there, I've just done exactly the same thing with the uh, transistor. Kinked the center leg back and then bent it forward to point straight down. Now at the end of the oscillator stage here, there is no test that we can actually perform because we need um, the demodulator stage and also we need to fit some of the other components. We need to finish the kit off really to, uh, to test it. So we're just going to carry straight on and uh, fit the demodulator stage as well. So it's just the, the FET needs to go in. Two resistors and a capacitor. So we'll just fit the capacitor in here. And the last two resistors.
and that's it. So now the uh, task is to fit the front panel onto the PCB. So using the supplied uh, bolt, making sure we put the washer in of course. And it just bolts to a modesty block here. And again, I'm only gonna do this finger tight. So I'm gonna put the washer in place and the nut. Tighten it all up together. And do the other side. And then once I'm happy that it's all finger tight and all locating correctly, then I'll just whiz around with the screwdriver and tighten everything up. So just locating the correct uh, pins, making sure that we connect everything up here. The uh, tuning capacitor just needs to go down the front. And there we go. It's time to uh, just check our work. And switch it on. So I've got 60 centimetres of wire here, the speaker. Perfect. Now the only thing I've got left to do is to install the knobs on the front of the panel. and start twiddling the, uh, the knobs on the front there and exploring the shortwave bands. And there we go, that's the uh, regen build. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, there's a couple of things I'm going to change on the, on the radio itself. I'm just going to um, tweak the toco a little bit to, to pep up some of its response. I'm also going to take it outside and I'm going to try it in a, a rural location uh, because around here is notorious for receiving any signals to be honest with you. Even though I was able to receive some broadcast stations um, I wanted to focus on the 40 meter band and uh, see if I could receive some signals um, from, from the hand bands. Um, let me know what you think anyway. Um, I think it's a great little kit. Um, it's, uh, it's available from Kangle Products. Contact them for prices. I'm unsure what the price is at the moment. Um, what I've built for you today is a prototype, so uh, it's, uh, it's not for public launch just yet. But uh, let me know what you think, and um, yeah, thanks for watching, and hope to see you in the next video. Thanks. Bye bye.